Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Shangru. Hello, hello, hello. And, folks, today we are on a rather, well, we don't see Tannenberg all that often. It's almost a unique, per se, but a rather different map. And, Ryan, who's here with us? Left hand side of blue, we have ourselves Robert playing as 21st Panzer with a Maverick Income. Right hand side in red, we have Ghost Dragon playing as the Jax with a Maverick Income as well. Otherwise known as the Cromwell Division. Like, I can't wait to get to Sea Phase when he has a card of 24 Cromwells and 80 points to use them. Yeah, I, I think he might need more Cromwells, just, just in case he runs out. Well, it's good to know. It's good to know that he can just kind of press the Tanko Burr button. Mm -hmm. um, 233 in the mini time, though, looking and trying to engage that poor Piat squad. Okay, good thing the 233 can't aim. But Tannenberg, uh, we don't see Tannenberg very often. No, I mean, it's a shame. It's a good map. It is. It is. It's open. It gives you a little bit of flavor at the forest or to like the middle north. Gives you some kind of you know kind of town stuff, but doesn't make it all about the town. Like there's there's it's got options, dude. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's a bloody cool map, and we're seeing a lot of the action here. It's happening down south. We got the checks thrown in all of their dudes, GRAF gunners, as well as FSO fusiliers. Well, from her Robert's side, a bit more on the lighter end of the 233s, which probably aren't going to hold out well in this fight. But we have the Clown Car Circus coming in, the French pack tracks, three of them, to be exact. Yeah, I got I got my Pinocchio tracks. Um, it's not the Pinocchio track, unfortunately, we haven't seen that guy in a very, very long time. But I do love me some, you know, <laughs> Hans's funnies, let's call them. Mm-hmm. But um, engaging right now, I mean, it's basically when you think about it, kind of like somebody took a martyr and said, hey, you know what, that's got too much armor. And thus, what's the French pack track for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit of desperation involved here as well. But he's got a flak 88, so definitely going classic 21st here. Very reminiscent of SD44 of using all the crazy clown car stuff early on. And then come B phase and C phase, we've got King Tigers and Panzer IVs. But it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, you go super cheap early on. If you can, bank points. If you can't bank points, well, that's totally fine, too. Um, but it's a lot of kind of incidental HE. Yeah. It's just volleying down troops as well. And it's all very clustered as well. But it's really going to be about whether we can get these pack tracks into a good angle or deal with these Cromwells. Because the Cromwells are very good at dipping in and out of towns. Yes, they are, and one of them is already down. Uh, I didn't quite appreciate, but every single one of the crazy French pack tracks is already on the map. Well, and they're dying at a rather prodigious rate. Um, but it is worth mentioning that they all were there. Three of them mm -hmm. down south are dead. The three to the north are still alive, but I don't imagine they will be for very long. They were there, and now they are gone. But we're seeing more reinforcements down south. Just looking at the rest of the map real fast, we see the central position. Ghost Dragons are going to be making the initial play for the Central Forest, which can always turn into a grind. And up north, we've got a pretty decent force here from her, Robert Moore, of them pack tracks. And not a whole lot of defense here from Ghost Dragon. No, not really. Uh, driver killed. But, you know, I find it kind of mildly amusing that the Cromwell doesn't really care that the driver's dead. So, mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, the rest of them are now dead as well. Um... It's not trooping, spam, open, you know, tons of fun. But at the same time, I would say they still at least trade rather well because of the converted RAF gunners. Well, this might be the only time that the RAF gunners might have more firepower than another infantry squad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A rarity. Vickers K. Not wonderful, but still technically a machine gun. Mm -hmm. Um... Where were we, though? It was 12-12. I'm sorry, it was 14-10. It is not back to a 12-12, because, frankly, when you have, you know, Hans's funnies, you can kind of shock the enemy for a couple of seconds, but they don't really hold territory particularly well, I would argue. No, no. It, the, especially in just our ST2 and a bit more openness of these maps. These S-35s, that's not Bocard's country. They can't dodge in and out between hedgerows. So they're going to be forced to engage these Cromwells out in the open, in the Cromwell may not be the best tank in the world, but it's much better than a 1930s French cavalry tank. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the, the word you're looking for is serviceable, and mm. I would have to 100% agree with you there. Yeah, and you, and you can kind of tell about that. If you look down south, on the southern side of the map, lots and lots of black smoke on the German side. 
Yeah, it's been pretty heavy casualties. The Ghost Dragon's been grinding here effectively, but her robot does have that point advantage. Probably not for too much longer as the center position is getting pushed. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Four dudes with flamethrowers, not going to be enough to push everybody back. But they, I guess, will get their, their pound of remote flesh. Uh, Fuck Wolf coming on in. Doesn't do quite as much damage as I was expecting. But anyway, that'll work. Yeah, does his job. But this is at least an open up door here for Ghost Dragon to pick up some more flags. He does have the better... In well, he has... Yeah, yeah, he definitely does have the better infantry spam. What the hell am I yeah, talking I about? Yeah, I was going to say. And then also, if he can just set up some anti-tank guns in this forest as well, some of 17 pounds, you can really start putting some pressure up north and down south. Uh, we are... Oh, we just did have a, a boy to Sherman for the Germans take out the Cromwell over here in the meantime down here for the Czechs. Again, have that wonderful moment of just like, wait, what country is here again? <laughs> when we have all the Boite equipment and Lund lease and everything like that going back and forth. Uh, the Flak 88 now is engaging a Churchill, so, you know, we have a giant exploding cigar shooting at the guy who loved to smoke him, and the exploding cigar takes him out, so that works out well. Yeah, the heavy tank really not able to survive the heavy fire from the Flak 88 here. The central, I mean, southern side is still just an absolute grind. Really, no one's advantage. I'm actually surprised here her robot isn't pushing a bit more up and off. I think it's just coming down to fog of war and just being so focused with dealing with down south. But if he was to make a bit more of a concise push up north, even with a bunch of Ernstad trooping, he could probably make some pretty good territorial gains. That is possible. Down south, I think the, the deadlock has been broken. There's a one Sherman left, but the Cromwell's kind of more or less chasing him, let's say. But the 88's gone. The last of the tracks are gone. Uh, the, actually, I think there's probably the ability to bring in a couple more 233s, but we're not going to see them for a good chunk. Mm -hmm. Here's my question. Why not stick a Sherman, you know, vaguely around that central position, or at least spend a tick or two bringing in actual troops besides air sets? It's... Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not really too... He does have he does have a face group. Yeah, he really yeah. does need some Panzergrenz. He absolutely does. There's there's got to be something that can, that comes out here. Yeah, Yo, I got confused when you said Germans for a second. Like, oh yeah, the Czech Sher No, no, no. Oh, the German Germans. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The German Germans. Again, it sounds it sounds like we have like a like a, a tongue twister mad lib going on here. But no, again, do not attempt to to smack your electronic devices that you're streaming this on. We are saying the correct thing. Yes. Um. But we are seeing a greater and greater influence over here on the ground attack planes. And I imagine those converted RAF gunners are saying, bro, please just get me to a cannon right about now. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's only two guys left to actually even say, bro. Um, yeah, it's not it's not good, which is weird because the Czechs have a lot of air power. Yeah, but it's not really that bad for Ghost Dragon up north because her robot isn't really exploiting it. He's, he can afford to... Have his converted gunners be converted into graves quickly because it's not a whole. If they're not pushing, if they're not getting flags and territories, it's not really going to matter if her robot kills a bunch of him. You have a very dark mind in the way that you look at things, and I oh, appreciate yes. it. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, looking down south, the deadlock has has tapered off. We are back to a true deadlock as opposed to a deadlock of people actively shooting at each other. The middle position is, you know, technically still pro check. Um, checks out. It does check out. Unfortunately, though, I get the feeling that we're going to have more and more airstrikes. We're starting to get more and more infantry here. Not enough, I think, to really take the position back, but enough for them to set up and take notice. Yeah. Fucker off coming in, gonna get a pretty good hit on the machine cover 42 team. And that position, if he can get, yeah, another machine cover team or some anti tank teams, that can really buy him some time in defending up north. He's still pushing through the central position with all of his flamethrower troops. They do get the really Gucci 10 man flamethrower troops and Thompson's as well, and a brand gun. I forgot just how good his check dude do get the flamethrowers. And he might be able to even get to the final flag be quite wild. 
I think that's true. Now, there's a Pioneer and a Plamenwerfer that are just apparently sitting on their bike and in their truck, respectively, and saying, you know what? I'll wait for this one. You know, if he takes it, I'm going to have it for a bit. You know, make him feel good. Mm -hmm. But they need to get in there right now, because otherwise they're going to start losing their comrades pretty dang quick. Yeah, it's someone else's role, you know? He wants to die in this one. I think that's true. That's true. Maybe that's what we're seeing here is now, that's because we have another airplane coming on in. More bombs. Oof. That was probably one of the best clockable strikes I've seen in a very long time. Yeah. And down south, it does feel Ghost Dragon is slowly getting the edge here as her robot's been grinded down quite a bit and having to refocus a bit more in the center. You're now seeing one of the first heavy tanks, the Tiger E, being brought up. But there's still a lot of chrome rails down south, and I'm, I'm, I'm just rating. Or like a Cromwell Ross. So I know it's not going to work and he's probably not going to do it. It's way too late. But I love seeing the opening Cromwell Rush. Well, I guess the other thing about this too is once Tigers come out, in fact, there's a second Tiger coming in here as well. I feel like that's pretty much what you have to do at this point is you either pray that your 17 pounder, which he does have, is going to be very, very accurate and very, very fast. In terms of acquiring targets here, but I don't, I don't know. I feel like you made the combat. He's got the southern town under control. Why push? Why bother? Mm -hmm. Get him, get him, Mitchell. Let's make this fun. Yeah, it's really gonna fall how Robert come down to his heavy tanks. So this is a pretty good heavy tank map, and I wouldn't be surprised if we do see at Koenig's Tiger being deployed. Because there's a lot of open ground areas. You can keep him back. You can set up an anti-aircraft net, which he already has. Or he did have one down south, but also just down south. How bloody Cromwell is making a bit of a flank here. I do quite like this. And also there's the uh, fling for infantry in the forest. If he was to move those guys up a bit up north, he could clear out the pack gun and the ersatz. True. True, true, true. What I was actually going to say is that if you look at the deployment of troops, it looks like Ghost Dragon is taking the gloves off. Ooh. Yeah. yeah that's a few yeah. guys. Yeah, just a, just a couple. And it looks like here Robert is not blind to this either, though. Unfortunately, he's bringing in Pioneers, which are close to action. Oh, yeah, he's going down south with this. So, okay. so Cromwell is down. But I imagine the back 38 is going to soon follow here. Yes, it will. Oh, boy, will it. Okay. Um, but it's not too shocking. No. It's not too shocking at all. Getting some good bloody hitching. And it looks like the Pack 38 might get rescued. And I say might because he's just as likely to get taken out by friendly fire. Shockingly enough, he survives. Waiting for one of those danger close missions where something that half the world gets obliterated in a blink of like a, <laughs> just a white flash. I'd be curious to see if this big infantry push down south does make the final breakthrough here to clear the rest of the town. It is, you know, the Tiger and the Sherman, yeah. And the Cromwells won't be able to really be enough to deal with that Tiger, but this is so many dudes. You know, I think this, the rate of the dudes alone, I mean, if you put them all, all together, all those dudes, I think it would rate. No, I wouldn't rate as much of a Tiger. A tiger's pretty heavy. I forgot That's how true. heavy, really, tanks are. Like, how many dudes you need to rate a tank. Uh, you need at least two dudes to rate a tank. You want to do the drive the tank onto the scale, and the other guy to read the, the, read the uh, numbers. Yeah. That's, that's probably much easier, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. I was thinking you have like a tank on one scale, like those, you know, like the Egyptian scales, and then you have to have like a hundred dudes on the other side. And that's how you'd rate tanks. Or we figure out if it's made of wood, and we see if it weighs as much as a duck. Oh, and then we figure out if we can go to the afterlife. Yes, exactly. Ah, that one too. There we go. Um, Easy. <laughs> fair cop. Uh, Tiger going to be engaging and being engaged by everything that has an actual cannon on top of it. Unfortunately, the things that have cannons on top of it don't have big enough snouts to really be deadly here. Oh, and the Koenig Tiger now being brought in. And we are seeing a lot of great heavy firepower being brought in from Robert. And that's going to help him a bit in defending. But this is such a rate of numbers against him. Yes, it's not as quality per se compared to... Well, the tanks at least, so check infantry is actually pretty good here. 
So I wonder if Ghost Dragon Rotos have enough to push through to see he has a lot of dudes. Well, this is why I get a birth ramen. So, oh, yeah. I mean, not for nothing, that's that's the infantry go away kind of talent here. And I think that, that's something's going to happen. Don't be afraid to do that. Engage like crazy. And we are going to see a 17 pounder probably kill this tiger uh, just in the north of the town. If it's not him, then it's probably going to get flinked to death by the Kramos as well. Um, but, yep, there he was the tiger. And you really cannot be afforded to lose these tigers as we get slowly and sl well, actually pretty quickly towards the end of B phase here. Come C phase, neither side has a lot of money, but it kind of screws over Robert because he can't rebuy his tigers. Because another one comes back, or another one blows up down south. Yes, it does. I think courtesy of another 17-pounder down there. So basically what I'm seeing is the Cromwells are far more likely to get in here in sea phase than we're going to be seeing anything else from the German side of, of uh, the gaff. Though, yeah. I mean, 18 P4s, technically they should be able to get in there and it shouldn't be too terrible. We'll see. Have we got off map being brought in? Down uh, center. Uh, ooh, center. Yes, there we go. I was actually I was checking that out before because I was thinking to myself, how does he push back all this infantry? And I did see they had the, the off map, but I wasn't really expecting to see it there. I I really feel like down south might be better, but I could see it. You know, concentration of fire, making sure he can kind of just hit the entire forest. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, honestly, I don't think it's really rare for her Robert to even push down south. It's just, it's it's way too many dudes at that party. It's beaten or it's over fire hazard safety. There's no point trying to get on in. You might as well try to find another venue to have a good night. Fair enough. It's just the, the ratios, they're all wrong. Yeah, what it's way too many Chrome Rouse. Fair. Absolutely fair. Um, it is still 1410, though, so I guess the question becomes is the middle where you try to kind of break through? I would say I so. A, oh, see, because I, I have to disagree with you here. I mean, the, yeah, there's four flags that are right there, but down south, between the Verframan, Koenigstiga, the off map, you toss down an artillery strike or two, add in the Verframan. You pick up at least two flags, I would say pretty easily, the front two. With the potential, based on how kind of the, the artillery strikes go in the first place, to kind of go and roll things back, you know, a couple hundred meters. I think there's there's certainly potential there. I don't know why he's just not being a little more aggressive on that, perhaps. There's also the far northern flank as well, which is still pretty quiet from Ghost Dragon. He's done a great job of just bluffing how heavily defended it is, because her Robert is barely pushed up. He blows up some things every now and again up north, which is good for him. But unless you're gonna follow up or something, it's not really worthwhile. That is fair. But the first artillery strike's gonna come down here in just a moment. And unfortunately, his few cities are falling right back into it. I don't think he... Oh no, he didn't know that was there. I thought the Zenista had been able to see them outside the forest, but no. They are in that little pocket dimension between the trees. Mm-hmm. Robert being aggressive here, love to see it. And there's the first from and down south. There we go. That's what we want. We want some heavy duty explosions. Exactly. Exactly. I'm a simple man. I see explosions, I press like. Yeah. Uh, and subscribe and, and hit that bell button. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And click on the end the end uh, end video card. If you like that, press that video here. Yeah. Um But the algorithm gods uh, do see that the fuselage are like, you know what, okay, now it's time for us to fall back, which I think is a, a very worthwhile and very respectable decision. Yeah. Yeah, have taken some heavy pound in here. It's a really one problem for her, Rob, but he doesn't have a whole lot of great CQC troops. She does have that one card of the phase pioneers, but it's really going to come down to the off map to actually win this central position fight more than enough. And you know, we have seen that happen in the past where people just do a rolling barrage of off maps and then before you know it, they get to the other side of the forest. I was going to say, it was a bad joke coming in there yeah. someplace, but yeah, you're absolutely correct. Unfortunately, though, for these leading troops, the FFO Fusiliers are, well, they're not pressured anymore. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Are they going to get close enough to go and take out that half-track? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. 
They're just going to buy some time for the retreat. And then also the flamethrower troops are going to come on in. It's just going to get rather hot here. But not a whole lot of fire support from her Robert. He is going to take heavy casualties run rail or another. Well, right now, dude, he's going to donate, I think, one squad at least to the, you know, to the Lord of Skulls just to kind of make sure he hits something of importance there. And um, we might have just kind of seen it here. 7.2 inch gun taking out a Flak 88. I'm actually kind of intrigued to see down south. We had teased a Verframan strike. And not for nothing, this is a grand opportunity. There's so many troops here. It is actually a little bit painful. Yeah, yeah, her robot is actually invested a decent amount. But also as well, if he tries to make his southern push happen, we're seeing the Cromwell and the 17-pounder down south where the attack beacon are in a very nice spot. The Cromwell getting some great long-range hits on the other side trooping. The Ruff Raman will be firing, but not in the position he needs to be firing. He's going to be firing it down south instead of in the Gucci infantry blob in the cent in the town, which... That's, that's a mistake. That's a big mistake. Unless he's doing like the whole one round kind of thing. Nope, it's more than one. Okay. Well, that was a decision. Yep, that was a decision, and, and it wasn't the best run. But that's going to take a while to reload. He's going to need to get a supply truck out. And that kind of ruins the surprise of the ref. And look, he knows where the ref ramen is. The typhoon's going to come on in. Oh no, it's a king tiger. But he yeah. tanks it. Yes, he does. Other Koenig's Tiger over here in the center. Um, it's good to see that the Verf Ramen will survive for right now, otherwise he'd be rather verfless. <laughs> um, but I digress. A couple 190s being brought in. I've been actually kind of surprised by how active the 190s have been here. There's been a lot of investment into the air power, and I, and I appreciate it, don't get me wrong. But I'm just surprised. Yeah. He's just using it to try to blow up his important infantry squad, but it doesn't really feel like he paid himself off. He just needs the more saturation bombardment to deal with the massive blobs. And we've seen a push down south here, but it's only a couple pads of grenadiers, and there's a lot of angry checks in that town who really risk the Germans would get out of their space. Isn't Tannenberg in Poland? Yes, it's somewhere in Eastern Europe, because there's that World War One game called Tannenberg, which is pretty good. Yeah, named for the, the giant battle, of course, which yes. apparently was fought nowhere near it, which... I don't know, there's a, there's a weird, long-storied history about that particular site that I will not get into, because I have not done enough research into it. Yeah, there's a lot of fighting in Poland for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, you know, it must be because of those winged hussars make everyone look like a boss, they're like, you yeah. know what, let's test ourselves here, let's do this. But the last artillery barrage should be called back over here in the center, and it's not going to be. But there's not, again, lots and lots of fleshy meat bags, which I think are just screaming, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me in the face. Yeah. And, yeah, Robert is making that slow progress in the center, but this is just coming down to the spam. Ghost Dragon has more cheap infantry spam. He's not exactly killing heavy tanks, but in SD2, it's just holding territory, especially in this, you know, sea phase, Maverick on Maverick. You just need to hold, so you just need to have a bunch of bodies to hold position. So his Fogrel for 90s might get some good hits here. Oh no, they're hitting more of the rear line. He does not see the company of Fusiliers walking up the forest. Yeah, I think that's why we're seeing, yep, at long last, the 172 is reciting himself. The Codex Tiga is being engaged by the 17-pounder. No, functionally, the only thing on the map which cannot theoretically be killed outright by the 17-pounder is, well, laughing it off, as you might suspect. Yeah. The King Tiger can just sit there and take damage. So, of course, the big problem with super heavy tanks and steel division, they can't get repaired. And he already took one Typhoon shot to the face. He probably still has a lot of internal HP. But those things can eventually just been, you know, worn down and blown up from high explosive firepower. So, unless he can really take advantage of the King Tiger's presence right now, all it can do is just provide some long-range snipes killing a single infantry unit or two. Well, another fuck was, by the way, in the center, slams a bomb in the middle of that attack. Wasn't soon enough to save that Pioneer Squad, but, but, 
it was enough to kind of stun everybody else just at the appropriate time. Last Barrage is coming in. Verfram is not going to follow this up. And the Codex Tiger goes down. Oh, wow. Ree. Yeah, that's, you, you can't afford to be losing that at this point in the match. Yeah. I'm sure there'd be some propagandist that back home probably saying you really shouldn't lose it at any point in the match. But I suppose you can hit it with a 7.2 shell. Um, kind of makes sense. Yeah. 172 off map is doing... You know, the Fuhrer's work, or rather furiously, as you might suspect. Doing lots of suppression, but there's nothing to follow this up. Yeah, that's a huge problem here, and that, that was a great strike, that's what he needs, but like you said, no follow-up. It's not gonna matter, he can just reoccupy the same position. And as you can see, if you just zoom out, this is one of those matches where there's a lot more red color than blue color on the map. The blue color has some pretty nasty units. But they're not units which can take position, so just units which kill stuff, and those units take a long time to kill stuff which are all down in town positions. Yes, indeed. I guess plenty of time for us to be brought back to kind of wait a fire on them as well. Carmel's... Oh, they are trying to get that Pegrin. Gotcha. That hmm. is a brave, brave man. Kind of humorously also, we see the artillery command officer way up front over here for the checks, which is an interesting call. He just really wants to command the artillery. Like, hey, I, I see him. They're coming right towards me. They're like five meters away. Drop it here. Now, I might be incorrect with the new trade understanding, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't work that way, correct? No. They only really uh, benefit artillery units. Kind of what I figured. Just wanted to double check my own personal erudition one more time there. Um, now, I'm trying to look otherwise, Pack 38 down south for some strange reason, like he was trying to get to engage at Cromwell, unfortunately, gets caught out pretty quickly, and the Verf Ramen goes down. Oh, that's a good snipe here yeah, from Ghost Dragon. A very good snipe, and at the same time, it's a very sad one, you know? We like our Verf Ramens here. We certainly do. Yeah. I like how the Germans just captured a Renault 35. You know what? This would make a great MLRS piece. It, it, we should just use this as an artillery gun, because why not? We're just, we're just strap some rockets to the side of the tank, and we're just kind of like light them up like Chinese fireworks. It'd be, it'd be fine. We're in the Royals, Ray. <laughs> From the Waffle Weapon yes. number 63. <laughs> <laughs> it's tank oh, and man. artillery. Two in run. You know, I'm, I'm having flashbacks to, like, you know, Call of Duty 2, was the first Soviet mission. You're, of course, playing through Stalingrad or something like that. And it was like, yes, please, go kill the Verframan that's over here. I don't know. I'm, I'm just having just... I could still hear the tanks going over top of the trench. Oh, chills, chills. Um, you know, I was also, also thinking about the fact that, you know, if, if you think about German, MLRS... We say MLRS, then they have a, probably a paragraph long word for it. Of course. Of course. In the middle, in the meantime, Fusi Leary is doing what they do, fusiling forward uh, and destroying pretty much anything that gets in their way. Tiger Tank trying to maybe vaguely cut them off and then realizes that that's probably not the best idea and backs away to the west. Yeah, that's not the best to for a Tiger Tank on any day of the week, so he might as well just bugger on out of here. Kind of bizarrely, the Pioneer has come a little bit further out, but does not seem like he wants to get involved here, and I don't blame him. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how Robert can do it at this point. He's got the King Tiger, it's just making one big push down south here, but he's going to run himself into all sorts of trouble. I mean, there's not a whole lot of trouble nearby, but it's just, geographically speaking, kind of overextends himself, it feels like. But he has to if he wants to make anything happen, and... Damn! I think that's a HE shower which blew him up. Well, you also noticed, too, that right before that happened, yeah, he surrenders. He, he went from that, you know, bright, healthy green to brown, oh shit moment. Yes. And that was a pretty devastating difference, I would say, overall. But you have to remember that 500 of those points are the two Koenigsteiger. Oh, they add up quite a bit. And if you just look at the chronology, yeah, especially once you look towards the end, like, it's pretty heavy losses here. 
Yes, it is. And mm -hmm. if you're looking even at the kill breakouts, Chromo Coda over here, this is the one that was down south. He shut down the three-pack tracks and one of the capture tanks. Oh, and he had the capture tank. Oh, and the grill wannabe. Oh, and 233. So, I mean... Oh, exactly. When their Cromwells are doing that Cromwell, it's, you, you can't do anything about it. You can't really push back on that. No, and then losses as well. The 150 did pretty decent. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, like, yeah, her Robert had a bunch of good quality units, but this game really comes down to quantity in the end of the day, especially once you get to that sea phase Maverick and both sides are just outer stuff. You just need a bunch of good, cheap, effective infantry. This is why a lot of the, you know, new divisions with some weird infantry unit, which been dredged out of historical record are really good because it's mm -hmm. just about having good cost effective infantry with some sort of gimmick to them and the Czechs do have that and they have a lot of Cromwells and the Cromwells are without a doubt one of the best like medium spam tanks in game currently absolutely true absolutely true only barely barely missed out by the the L6s oh yes oh absolutely um but enough about the Italians and their their crazy pasta tanks uh, anything else, sir? No. Well, folks, in that case, then, you know what time it is for us. It's time for us to say goodbye. Until next time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.